Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez here. It is January 23rd and it is Monday evening and it's been dreary, 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 cold, rainy. We have one of those weird storms that comes from the southeast northward and uh, it's dumping a lot of rain. If it had been snow, it would be up to our ears in snow. Thank God for that. Anyway, today I received an email as a reply to my email to John Cohn of Ancient Mall. And I was inquiring about the new high-density black ink that they are offering. And basically at this point it's matte black, which is the one that needs the most punch to be able to create really, really super deep blacks on matte papers. And so he's sending me 110 ml of that ink. And he's also sending me 110 ml of light black and light light black for my batch, my incomplete batch of cone inks that I have here. And I will be able to then test that as well. I'm going to go ahead and use my Epson R3000, which is basically stuck on the matte position. So I will fill that cartridge, which is now filled with OEM inks, with the new black ink from cone and I'll use that to print some samples on many types of matte papers and we'll make comparisons between OEM which is what I have now and then the hybrid ink set that I will create by just removing the ink the OEM ink from the matte cart flushing it and then refilling it with the new high density matte black from cone and that should prove very interesting. I'm also going to do that with several other ink sets that I am using. I wish I could do that with the P800, but as we know, that one is locked to um, OEM now, basically. I am running my refillables, but right now, once they reach low, I don't think they will ever reset. I have an early, pretty early uh, firmware, but I don't think it will work at any rate. Cone has also confirmed that, yes, indeed, European versions and other regions of the world versions of the P800 do work with the so-called auto reset chips that come with the refillables that have been sold basically by, you know, just about everybody before they realized that it would not work on North American printers. And it's all to do with the uh, zoning and the firmware. And so nothing we could do other than import a printer from Europe and pay a premium. Then you will have to use a transformer to be able to upscale to 220 voltage in the correct uh, frequency. I think it's 50 cycles. So that's about it. So anyway, I'm going to go ahead and test the cone inks. I'm going to go ahead and test the OEM. And I'm going to go ahead and also test precision colors, um, inks on the R2880. While I have the OEM test will be on the uh, R3000. And we will see. We'll make direct back-to-back -back comparisons with the new Cone HD ink and without. Okay. With the regular ink that comes with the particular ink set that I'm testing. All right. Enough of that. Now. If you recall a while back, I told you that I had ordered some sample paper packs for Hannah Mule. And this is the Digital Fine Art Collection Sample Pack Glossy Fine Arts paper. And it comes with several types of paper, eight to be exact. And I decided to go ahead and download all of the profiles. And I chose the Pro One as my go-to printer to begin to test. Now, I thought I would also use the Pro 100 as a dye-based printer. And I almost went ahead and, and also tested the um, one of the Epson printers, but I only have four sheets of each. So, and I wanted to do a black and white and also a full color image. So what I decided to do was, since I'm using the Pro 1, I went ahead and printed one on, and let me look at the code in the back. And this would be Hannah Mule Fine Art, Fine Art Pearl, 285 gram 
paper. And I printed an equivalent print on just our Canon Pro Luster paper. And we're going to go ahead and look at the differences. Then I made a black and white conversion using uh, NYX Silver FX. And here it is right here. And then I went ahead and printed a larger version on just Pro Luster. And we'll look at these in a second here. So let's look first at the color one. Let me move this slightly out of my way here. We'll look at the common ProLuster version, and it looks like ProLuster, but very plasticky. The pure white section has gloss differential, even though I use overall gloss application, it still has a little bit of gloss differential. And um, what can you say? Anyway, the one done on the Hanamiel, however, does not. And it is just lovely. The surface is very good. It looks like a fine burrito type um, surface. I'm not going to say that it looks like I did a dye based image back in my wet lab, but it looks lovely. It looks lovely. The sharpness, if I remove my glasses so I, I can look up very close, it is incredibly sharp. The detail that this paper can hold is actually visibly slightly better than Pro Luster, which is amazing. And this is the straight raw image out of the camera, unedited, out of Q image, the latest Q image. And the rendition is just fabulous. Now the ICC profile for both pretty much render this image equally. I gotta hold this so that it doesn't flip around anymore. And as you can see, it's pretty much identical. The image itself is a little bit dark. I need to lighten it as I would edit it. And so I decided to use just the raw straight image out of the camera without any manipulations whatsoever. And by golly, this looks identical to what I see on my monitor as far as brightness, as far as color and overall detail. Of course, the monitor is backlit, so I get a little bit more shadow detail. But if I really light this, with a very bright light source, I can see the same amount of shadow detail that I see on my monitor. And that's what's important, you guys. You have to view your images under bright illumination next to your monitor. Don't put it next to your monitor in the same illumination that you're using for viewing your screen. That's not going to work. Your print is going to appear darker then. You must use the correct level or intensity of light to be able to make an assessment whether it matches your monitor or not. And the most important thing is, does it match color-wise? And of course, you're supposed to soft proof before you send to the printer. That gives you a pretty good approximation of what it's going to look like with a particular paper, with a particular profile, and a particular printer and ink. So that is the way to predict pretty much how your prints are going to come out. And this is absolutely lovely. This would not be bad at all as a larger print. I can see that it could possibly be easy to mar the surface because it's a very delicate uh, type paper. Another thing is that on the Pro 1, it says to use the fine art feed or the manual feed. Well, that would impart a 35 millimeter border on the leading edge and on the trailing edge, which I did not want. So I actually fed it using the top feeder and I used, um, I think it was a Pro, not Pro Luster, I used a semi-gloss paper type. Now, what I need to do, because I use a semi-gloss paper type, the plate and gap is much narrower than it should be for this thick paper. It's great for this. You know, so does the Luster. The Luster works perfectly for this, but this is a bit thicker. So you could use the um, reduced vibration type setting and increase the gap a little bit. And uh, not that I needed it. I see a couple of little, what look like little strikes right here in this area here. But that may be just the, the way the paper is uh, designed. It's a little bit stiff and thick. So I think it needs a little bit of help if we're just going to go ahead and cheat and use the top feeder, the regular paper feeder. Now let's go ahead and look at the black and white. We're not going to get into the... Con version details, 
but as you can see I used a filter to make the dresses look very bright and anything that was reddish and pinkish was actually enhanced and brought up in density and that lightened up their faces this looks absolutely lovely this is the uh, luster right here this is the uh, Hannah Mule and I love it I love the way it looks I'm going to be visiting uh, the family in the next couple of weeks because she just had a baby and uh, I'm going to present her with a bunch of photos and so she should be very happy to receive these the results again extremely sharp I'm telling you this is crazy the way this paper can can depict sharp sharp images this is also sharp but I would never have thought that a paper with such a a slightly more pronounced um, surface texture would still be able to render such sharp photographs what can I say I'm a firm believer of these more expensive fine art papers and I'm going to go ahead and uh, as I go through this whole pack and experiment using all of the different papers that are provided including a beautiful uh, semi-glossy canvas I'm going to go ahead and choose a couple of them and then invest some money in getting some larger uh, boxes of the maybe 13 by 19 or even 17 by 22 we will see all right now let me leave you with one last image this is one that I did I had a sheet of a 13 by 19 that had been cut down and I decided to go ahead and create an oddball uh, size I think this is I don't know what it is uh, 13 by something and so I printed it out I cropped the edges a little bit and uh, turned out beautiful and she will love this and again the thing to look for in something like this especially where you have so many delicate tonalities such as this gorgeous and very expensive wedding gown all of the nuances all of the nuances the only only super white spot is right here on her on her breast and that turned out to be the whitest point and somewhere here in this area here is the darkest point and you can see everything in between so the pro one does an amazing job with tonal gradations and fine fine transitions from one tone to the other in fact they're almost imperceptible so that's where the pro one excels and the pro 1000 is supposed to be just as good but they went ahead and removed one of the grays and replaced it with a blue which I think will help a lot with those pesky blues and dark purples that are so difficult to reproduce and that is it I hope you enjoyed this video again as I receive these other inks and materials I'm going to go ahead and start producing some of those tests for you to see and this is what I want to do this is I want to provide you guys with information that you're not going to find anywhere uh, you cannot go to a company and get biased information you got to come to someone who is going to do it unbiasedly I don't care if they gave me that ink basically for free to test I'm going to go ahead and test it and regardless of the results that's what I'm going to report on and I have done that in the past if you've been watching me you know that I reported on an ink set that was just a bit inferior so and I told you guys about it so that is it thank you we had a great celebration for the 5,000 subscribers milestone it was fantastic and we're still increasing still growing so in please subscribe share and like I'm a little tired if I look if I sound like I'm a little tired it's because I'm a little tired I actually have a headache so <laughs> but thank you guys for watching and continuing to watch I have been getting so many great comments and thanks and all I can say to you guys is thank you back back at you and so again keep subscribing please like and share until the next time and we have some good things coming down the pike the rest of this pack is going to get printed I'm going to use different images I'm going to convert them to black and white as well so you'll get the uh, both effects the possibilities of black and white reproduction and color happy printing everybody bye bye